Fuck me and my fucking asshole. What's up, everybody? It's Rixty Minutes. I'm the best guy ever here with Digibro. Hey, I'm still alive. You sure are, dude. Uh, so we just watched uh, uh, episode five of season three. Uh, what was this one called? The Grand Adventure of the Jerry and Rick. Durley. The Whirly Durly. The Whirly Durly. Of course, of course. Who could forget? <laughs> Such a wonderful name. Uh, yeah, so this was way better than the last episode, right out of the gate. A thousand oh, times yeah. better. We got a lot of flack for uh, not liking the previous episode. We sure it did. Seemed like. I, I don't Some know why. Some people really enjoyed it. And so many people were just like, guys, you fucking tools. Obviously, it was a Avengers reference. Therefore, all your criticisms don't make sense <laughs> did, and are I invalid. Didn't okay. Yeah. Literally, what the fuck is the difference between an Avengers reference and a Guardians of the Galaxy reference? Okay. Like, uh, literally, <laughs> what? So, because so, the Guardians of the Galaxy. <laughs> are a part of the Marvel Universe. Yeah. They're another five-person team, and they're in the fucking new Avengers movie! So, what the fuck is the difference? Uh, I, I think what they were... Uh, like, it doesn't make any fucking difference, but to these incredibly pedantic people, it's that, like, these guys, like, form up as a team, like, when called upon, like the Avengers do. What they're not the always a squad. Like the Yeah, I Literally, don't know. It doesn't the, make any difference. What the fuck effect does that it have on the episode? Matter. Zero. Zero. <laughs> it means nothing. Which, and I know you yeah. haven't seen the Avengers either, mm -hmm. have you? No, I haven't. Exactly. So it doesn't fucking it wouldn't have affected anything. <laughs> but it, no, that, I, that's I, uh, I have, and I still I don't give a. It makes no difference. Well, it's just that thing. Like we say something that's like not even like wrong, but like slightly maybe a bit incorrect, and so that may, allows there to be a justification for why we're just totally invalid. Our, our entire point our it, opinions can be thrown I, I out. I don't at even. That point. I can't even like process the idea that it's less correct to say it's a Guardians of the Galaxy parody than it is. A Avengers pit. Yeah, it's they're literally the same thing. You got what? <laughs> but one's they're in got, space. Yeah. One, you, you got uh, like like the main the 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 dude who's like the human guy. Uh -huh, yeah. You could say he's Star Lord. You mm -hmm. could say he's Tony Stark. Either way, it makes just as much fucking sense. Yep. You know, you're right. Dude. Is 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 the pile of ants supposed to be uh, <laughs> the Hulk or is he supposed to be like Ultron uh, or that other guy? The, the tr Vision. No, Tree Bo Oh, Groot. Groot. Yeah, Groot. Yeah, yeah. There you go. I is don't he supposed know. to be Groot or is he supposed to be someone? From... It doesn't matter because they're none of them are in a direct parody. That was my whole complaint. Anyway, <laughs> forget about that episode. Yeah, that one doesn't matter. Let's move on. So this one's great. Uh, yeah, this episode was was really great. It was fucking great. Uh, I loved it. I'd say I loved it. Uh, it was everything this, I wanted. Uh, this felt like a season one episode to me. Like, it yeah. really took me back in a way. In a way I that I really wanted. In a way that was good. Refreshing. Yeah. And some people were asking me, because, uh, mm -hmm. you know, they preview the shit out of these episodes before they come out. I ignore yeah, all yeah. that. Because back in season Same. two, um, I was following, like, I, f I follow Rick and Morty on Facebook and shit. And, like, mm -hmm. in season two, I was watching all the trailers beforehand and shit. And all it did was make it so I wouldn't laugh at that joke when it happened in the episode. Exactly. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Like, because I've heard it too recently, mm -hmm. or, or or out of context, and like so it happened in the episode, and I'd be like, oh, this is the part I saw in the trailer, so I don't laugh at it. The worst example of that was uh, in season two when Morty turned into a car. Oh, yeah. They had already spoiled <laughs> that, and like, had I not known that, that shit would have blown my mind to fuck, but I knew already, so it wasn't that... There was no impact. So I try to ignore all that. But people mm -hmm, bring mm -hmm. it up in our comments anyways. And people were asking me, like, oh, are you worried they're bringing back Jerry next week? But it was Jerry and Rick. And that, mm -hmm. if, as soon as I heard that, I was excited. Because what I'm sick of with Jerry is him and Beth. Like, oh, yeah. that dynamic is played out. Jerry and Rick, you can do anything with, you know. Yeah. So I yeah. thought, oh, no, that sounds awesome. Yeah, I'd love to see Jerry and Rick. It's a great combo. And uh, it and, was. And so it was. Combo. It was. It was great. You know, just like bouncing. Rick is just the guy with no filter who will just tell you what's up. And, you know, we yeah. just really dive to the heart of Jerry's character here. And, you know, there's that scene later on where he just, like, spells out exactly what kind of a guy Jerry is. And yeah. uh, it was fucking devastating and fantastic. And that's the kind of shit I love. That scene was great um, because it put words to, like, what our problem with Jerry is mm -hmm. like not mm -hmm. just like like it's it's everyone's problem with Jerry right everyone knows Jerry's a shit but like sometimes like I've seen in our comments people being like why are you guys so harsh on Jerry like what the fuck what you know and we're like well that's the thing like Rick kind of spells it out right here that yeah like Jerry himself is not a great guy mm -hmm. like not, and not just because he's an idiot because he 
he just manipulates people to get what he wants. You know, he's constantly in this, uh, oh, I'm, oh, everyone beats up on me. I'm the victim. I'm the victim. Even though he's the one who, like, like Rick said, mm-hmm. uh, he's, it's his fault. Beth's unhappy at this point. I mean, it's both of their fault equally, but like, she, he wasn't a good husband for her. So he's not like, it's not like because she's breaking up with him, he's the victim here. It's like, no, you were both bad for that's, each other. That's exactly you know? right. Uh, and you know what's fascinating about this to me? It really reminds me sort of of a dynamic of the worst kind of like YouTube commenter versus like a YouTube creator. Just as an example in my life, like Rick is a guy who goes out and creates things. You know, he doesn't need yeah. society to give him anything. He creates value in his life and in those around him. Jerry, on the other hand, is a parasite. He's a little scum sucking yeah. shit who can't do anything for himself. He's like a YouTube commenter. He's like a whiny, entitled YouTube commenter who just, you know, wants stuff given to him for free. And when he doesn't get exactly what he wants, he'll bitch and cry and complain and pretend that he's been bullied in some way. Not that I really have any experience with this, but just his, in my experience in YouTube, like, you see that shit around. Like, it just, just Jerry yeah. is the worst parts of humanity. Like, the, the people that I want to all die. And I only respect the people <laughs> like uh, like Rick, who, who just, they right. do things. They create, they, they add value to the world so that the people like Jerry can live better lives, but they don't deserve better lives. They just happen to be there in, in, in the warm glow of the genius and the power that is the Rick yeah. Sanchez's of the world. I mean, so, someone like Jerry, he really preys on the, our humanity. Oh, yeah. Like, like th- this is where... Cause He's a moral parasite. We, he is a moral parasite. Sometimes when we look at Rick, like, there's clearly elements of Rick that are monstrous and should, are not advised. Of course. That are not good for him or for anybody. Mm-hmm. You know, like, this this level of, um, of, like, detachment from emotion is not a good idea. Mm-hmm. However, mm-hmm. there are also elements of Rick... That are there to protect us, that we should incorporate into our lives, like being able to like see through this kind of manipulation of yeah. someone like Jerry, because the average person, uh, yeah, was gonna feel sorry for him, and like that's how he'll fuck you, you know. And you know, that's I, how I'm, he'll. I really love how he brings up specifically like Jerry. Like it's not like there are no victims. You are the predator. Beth was your prey. You used your pathetic little, you know, whiny existence as a way to entrap Beth to like suck the life out of her, who, you know, is a far yeah. more capable person than Jerry. He's the parasite. He is the bad guy here who just used this kind of emotional manipulation in his life and does constantly that we see every fucking episode that he's in to to just, you yeah. know, be a baby, uh play play prey upon people's like uh, desire to you know like even in this episode like he just fucking is so pathetic that nobody feels like killing him they're just like this is not yeah. worth my time it's not worth my time and that's what he does with beth and you know it's 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 great to just see it spelled out so black and white yeah. and you know what um just to get a little more actually you know what i don't want to say that never mind <laughs> never mind <laughs> well i'll to go, to go further into the episode yeah. um there's an opportunity here because I've been complaining about how I wanted Jerry to just be out of the show. But right. I do think there's ways to use him. Like, the reason I wanted him out, I wanted him out exactly this way. Mm-hmm. Where he's mm-hmm. just not in the house having the same B-plots he's had We before. just don't want the same story again and again. And this isn't yeah. the same story. This is but new there's, ground. There's a huge opportunity at the end of this episode where Jerry seems to kind of learn mm. from what mm. Rick accused him of. And the, other, and the fucking other dude. You know, like... Jerry gets his shit rocked emotionally, yep. and he actually seems to reflect on it a little. And it, it seems like throughout the season, Jerry has kind of been, like, taking in the criticisms people have had of him. You know, like, you know, as it's gone on, he's kind of reflected. And I'm wondering, mm-hmm. what if Jerry actually, actually develops as a character you in know, this dude, season? It reminds me of when I was a young lad uh, and not doing a lot with my life before I had my shit together. Like, my parents would just bring up occasionally how they needed to throw me out. And not that yeah. they would, but like they're just like, Nate, you're living here, you're just being a bum. What are you fucking doing with your life? And that was entirely yeah. fair, and like throwing me out would have been a fine and reasonable thing to do. Uh, and that's kind of exactly what happened to Jerry, you know? You gotta fucking nut up in a situation like that and face your shit and recognize that, like, he's just being placated by continuing to live with Beth and, like, continuing to receive, to continue to suck on the teat of, of, of sweet life yeah. that comes from these, these better people in I his actually, life. I actually, 
I actually know a guy, Mm -hmm. now that I'm, like, thinking about it and hearing it, like, through this episode, (laughs) I'm realizing I know a guy who's just like Jerry, Uh who has a victim complex. He's constantly blaming the circumstances surrounding him Mm -hmm. and other people being an asshole, but he himself is a vindictive shit who, like, (laughs) the second, the second he has the power in a situation, he takes advantage of it. Just like Jerry does in this episode, where when Rick's retarded, Jerry's just beating up on him ruthlessly, even though he would never, he, you know, at all other times, he's crying victim because of uh, of Rick's actions. I knew a guy exactly like that, and he got kicked out of my group of friends for being that way. Like, we, he, he, he pissed off everyone I knew so many times that we eventually just had to say, you can't come here anymore. Mm-hmm, like, mm-hmm. just like Cherry. So that's and just, it's kind of the inevitability with someone like this because yeah, they are yeah. so sure that everyone else is the asshole that they will never process the fact that they are the real asshole. That's, you know? that's exactly right. And the best you can hope for in a situation like that, I think, is that, like, you kick this person out, they finally have to face the real consequences of their lifestyle and their attitude and actions. And, like, m- hopefully they'll become a better person and then, like, get a decent group of friends elsewhere. Or, like, maybe get a yeah. family that, that, like, they've actually formed a real bond of respect with. And you know what? Maybe years later, they'll be, once they've become a good person, they'll be able to come back and be like, hey, man, you know, hey, I ain't see you in a while. You know, I'm not a pathetic piece of shit anymore. I really became a good person yeah i'm doing my own thing now don't need to you know drag everybody else around down with me i've got this other thing that i've developed in my own life you know my own my own situation my own friends my own circle that i built up with actual positive character traits and uh and then you can have that kind of relationship later on you know but uh i i i love i love it when people have to face their shit that's fucked up about themselves personally and get over it and uh yeah, that's what this episode was, and it was fucking great. I, I love that the scene of Rick hammering Jerry with all of that yeah. is immediately followed by a scene of Jerry being repeatedly slapped in the face by the testicles of a monster that he's riding <laughs> in the sack of. Yeah, uh, that was fucking great. That's I mean, that's what I love about Rick and Morty. That's the kind. That's the Rick and Morty I want. I I can deal with all the the clever, <laughs> you know, the clever bickering or whatever. Is, uh, you know, like the last episode, I was complaining that too much of it was like the snarky back and forth. Mm-hmm, the mm-hmm. the Rick and Morty stuff that makes me bust out laughing is when they hit you with some some deep real shit and then follow it up with a amazingly timed dick joke. You know, <laughs> the show really needs to keep that going if it doesn't like yeah it starts to feel like uh like a marvel movie i guess which i don't yeah. want which i do not want this yeah <laughs> i want to keep that raw shit keep it flowing yeah. guys uh yeah it was fucking good. not to mention the fact that during that that you know scene where uh jerry's just being emotionally devastated by rick and he's crying he's just like literally being eaten and eaten, devoured yeah. by a monster and is fucking dying great, just I, great I, that's great you know you gotta die and you gotta deal with your shit to become a, a real boy jerry yeah. oh it was good hey but you know there was a bunch of other cool stuff in this episode how about that yeah. immortality field that's pretty fucking Very, dope. yeah cool idea yeah um there's a there's a manga that uh is kind of all about this like exploring this idea, this oh, yeah? manga called Immortal Hounds, which takes place in a world where there's like a society where no one can die, mm-hmm. and like people who can die can because of like a disease. Um, mm, okay. So like the police are just hunting those people down with impunity because like mm. they don't want to spread the disease of being able to die. Ah, so right, if you okay. can die, and they can just shoot anybody. It doesn't matter, because if you're immortal, Mm -hmm. you'll come back to life. And if you die, oh, well, that guy had the disease, so Uh, fuck him, you know? So it's just, like, constant violence and people (laughs) shooting each other. And and the thing is that in in Immortal Hounds, it's not that you heal instantly like you do in this. It's Mm -hmm. that um, when you die, you heal. So if you, say, lose your arms then you'll just be without arms until you bleed out and die, and then you come back. Oh, I see. Um, So it does a lot of interesting things with that. This is a a less interesting usage of the concept than that, but that's also, in that case, it's the entire series is about that. Yeah, right. The fact that they even insert that into one episode as, like, a set piece is is great and is really cool, and, and yeah, it's it's used to what little, you know, like, the effect that they could cram into this episode. My one, I think my favorite part of the whole episode that wasn't directly related to, to Jerry's whole shit was just at the end, after, like, you know, the shit goes down and the immortality field goes away and the little kid who had been murdering his sister for fun over and over shoots her again he's just like liz yeah. 
She's she's fucking and, dead. And the yeah, thing about that you scene, piece of shit. yeah, yeah, that's that scene is close to this show. I, I've said this before. This show's always writing on this line between mm-hmm. like just glib violence that I would find disgusting mm-hmm. and violence that's fun and breezy. Yeah, and this is like right on the line, but I think it's fun and breezy. Whereas in the last episode, the one guy getting horribly fucking murdered for no reason was just right. kind of gross. Mm-hmm. It was like, why? Why did we need this? Like, what did he do that was so obnoxious that he deserved to die so? bizarrely in this episode it's just some minor little background character but the fact that earlier in the episode jerry had said that's just bad parenting either way that makes it hilarious that's, that that's, it happens that's exactly you know? right and beyond hilarious it, it's actually kind of making a point that i actually yeah. like a lot it's like yeah don't live in a fucking fantasy world like uh, jerry's exactly. just like this is like, j- fuck the fact that jerry immediately recognized that this is like stupid and irresponsible and was 100 yeah. percent right yeah it's good you know he's got a little bit of wisdom in him as he He's not a total fucking yeah. idiot. It's good. That was really good. Yeah. It was a good moment. Kill more um, children, Rick and Morty. <laughs> we got to Yeah, and it's, you know, they managed to make horribly murdering a child funny. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um what I'm trying to think of like I'm trying to think of anything other than the crazy trippy scene to talk about, but right, we have yeah. to address it because it's just this episode they go through a wormhole and just there's this total mind fuck scene where they get like mind melded for an epoch or something. Yeah, but it's a fleeting high, so you it's like waking up because I I know this feel of like. I've had those dreams that last, like, days, Mm -hmm. and it's like you've lived this other life, and then you wake up, and for, like, five minutes, you feel, like, this incredible dysphoria between, like, your mind and body having, like, having to remember who you (laughs) actually are and, like, where you really are, Uh Uh, but then it just goes away, and you forget about the dream, and it doesn't matter anymore, and, like, that was this moment of, I have, um... Something I've always been really interested in is, like, these kinds of time accelerations. Like, people who've experienced an incredible amount of time would have such a different perspective on everything, you know? So, like, in that moment after it happened, they have such this incredible understanding of one another that could have been... I mean, that was a whole epoch of experience of them being a completely different person, but they forget about it so quickly... That it already doesn't matter. Yeah. You know? Yeah. They lived they lived an infinite number of other seasons of Rick and Morty that we'll never see. <laughs> That's know? an excellent way to put it. Yeah. <laughs> in, in which Rick and uh, Jerry have a, a great relationship. Doing weird trippy shit. Like fucking and also turning into animals, animals and each other. <laughs> killing each other and evolving yeah. and shit. Yeah. And then at the end, he's like already, he just doesn't give a fuck. After like one yeah. second. Oh, it's fucking hilarious. It's great. Yeah, yeah that, that's the, the great juxtaposition there of all this, like, epic shit happening and them just not giving a fuck. Like, that's, like, the right. good kind of nihilistic stuff this does. That's yeah. just, it's, like, it's like a fucking funny joke that makes me laugh and go, ha-ha, that's good. That's that's the good shit. While also being it, – it, n- while also not only being – a like high level concept, mm-hmm. but also one that you can understand in one sentence. Yeah, like yeah. Rick explains, he just says, "Yeah, like that experience, whatever it's called, is a more fleeting high than salvia." You know, like yeah. <laughs> immediately we get why they're coming down, like what just happened and why it's not affecting them anymore is all said in a couple lines. Mm-hmm. While you're imagining this much bigger concept that they've actually explored, that's classic. That's what I love about Rick and Morty. That's, yeah. like, my favorite thing about the show is that. It's fucking brilliant. Um, and uh, then also one of my favorite scenes is... So we've got a B-plot in this episode about Summer accidentally turning herself giant. Um, <laughs> it's definitely the the less interesting part of the episode, but I'm okay with that. I'm okay with B-plots in general. Yeah. I think it makes sense when you're trying to split up a story and have more than one thing going on. And we get this fucking hilarious moment when Beth <laughs> turns herself giant and is talking to Summer mm-hmm. and you can't understand what either of them are saying. Like, they're having this big emotional moment, but it's just... <laughs> <laughs> and that was fucking hilarious. Yeah, that me. was really great. By the way, do you think this was at all an Attack on Titan reference? They just kind of looked like it, you know? No, I know, I know it's kind of reaching, but... You mentioned it. Yeah, I didn't yeah. even think about it. Mm-hmm. Could be, for all I know. I don't know. Um, uh, what'd you think of Morty vindictively... Fucking over uh, the guy who 
<laughs> for hurting his sister's feelings. Yeah, I mean, uh, <laughs> I I enjoyed seeing Morty in that role of like the yeah. like. It, it makes sense that like this guy has seen the shit now. Like he's yeah. he's in a place where he can easily do this kind of stuff when he wants to, just like threaten people. And do you think Morty will eventually become Rick? Like that's kind of what seems to be implied, sort of. In, in season mm-hmm. two, we were constantly given. In, in fact, if, ever since season one, there's been this idea that th- that he is the good Morty. He's mm-hmm. the smarter Morty than the, than the other Mortys. Right. Um. And in season two, it, he always has these moments where like he tries to be like more Rick like, but he's still so stupid that he gets himself <laughs> fucked over anyways. Uh-huh. But now in season three, sometimes. Morty doesn't fuck up. This episode, Morty had all the power. Morty tricked Rick into going on this adventure so yeah. he could get rid of Rick. He sure did. He like, sure did. Rick, the, the concept of this episode is Rick thinks he's taking... He, he thinks Morty is so worried about Jerry, so he takes Jerry on a fake adventure to placate Morty. But Morty is actually just wanted a break <laughs> from hanging out with Rick and so tricked him into taking his dad instead. Yeah. Morty doesn't give a fuck about Jerry. <laughs> he doesn't give a fuck about Rick. He just wanted Rick out of his hair. And then he's mad and, you know, and he's mm-hmm. smarter than his mom in the situation they get into. You yep. know, he's the voice yep. of reason there. And I'm just like, Morty was completely on top of his game this episode. What the fuck? You know? He's really getting his shit together. Yeah, there's no doubt about it. Yeah. It's an interesting idea. I, I've I, never I, been sure if I wanted that, mm-hmm. but now if it's like this, I kind of do. Well, you know, I was thinking, uh, so we've seen like all these multiverse versions of Morty, but have, have we ever seen like older Morty? Like what he'll be like as an adult? No. I don't think we've ever explored that. Um, we've never really got into like mm-hmm. future or past of the timelines of the characters. Which is probably smart in terms of wanting yeah. to be able to keep writing the story without fucking up too bad. Yeah. Like, all the different Ricks, uh, the different dimensional Ricks are always him as an old man, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah. By the way, um, quick aside. Uh, so, in this episode, we learned that Rick's got a ton of cybernetic enhancements all over his body. Yeah. And that's really cool, and I like that. Uh, it's, it's interesting. But it's kind of weird that that hasn't ever come up before. And it strikes me as, like... Okay, he's been in a lot of situations where it would be really useful to have used those, and he just never did. So it's it feels to me like someone just wrote that in this episode, like they thought it'd well, be cool. When we finally see him use one, he mm-hmm. like opens up this massive gun to shoot a suction cup at somebody. So I think maybe well, they're all, all just weird, stupid prank well, he, weapons. Well, he, he does stuff, that, but then know? he also blasts the guy's head off like with the same gun. But yeah, it also had like, the well, suction cup thing. Um, yeah. Uh, I I don't care at all. It was cool, but yeah. it's I yeah, it doesn't matter. I my favorite joke in this episode is um, placated Rick. Mm-hmm. Like the fact that the idea that in order to prevent international terrorism, mm-hmm. when you get on a plane, they just inject you with something that makes you uh, oh, a yeah. fucking retard with no controversial opinions mm-hmm. or, <laughs> or or intelligence. <laughs> yeah, and that. And that they did this to Rick. Like, he was not prepared for it, and now he's just completely helpless. And he's talking like a baby, and it's fucking hilarious. Like, Jerry beating up on him while he was retarded was the funniest <laughs> shit in the world to me. Yeah, that was good. That was good shit. Um, well, fuck. Any, anything else? I mean, we did... Oh, you know what? Uh, one other aspect of this episode is, like, uh, like, Beth's just, like, need to, like, be in charge of shit. Like, she's doing this yeah. weird, you know, what she's doing her weird, like, Hovar, like, lol, epic joke, guys. Um, but then, that like, was a bizarre one. Yeah, yeah I, 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 I thought it was kind of cool. But then, like, so there's the whole thing that she's kind of, like, vying with Morty about how, like, she needs to, like, be able to solve these issues without her dad. And it seems yeah. like it all really just stems from the need to, like, like, Morty sums it up later on in the episode. Like, yeah, like, just stop, stop sucking up to your dad. Like, stop trying to just, like, make his life yeah. great and be super you know, uh, caring and, and whatever, like conciliatory to whatever he fucking needs. I feel like, uh, mm-hmm. what's great about this situation with Beth is that now with Jerry out of the picture, we're getting to look at the fact that Jerry wasn't all her problems. Yeah. That's you know, right. like up until this point, it's been like all of the bad things, like all of her emotional issues have been blamed on Jerry. And now that we see that with him out of the picture, she doesn't just immediately thrive. Yeah, she's not yeah. suddenly like a badass who gets to do anything. She's just a horribly emotionally damaged weirdo who, you know, like mm-hmm. instead of going and doing something scientific with her time is like building a hoof statue. It's like, what? Yeah. she's, she's broken. 
Which you is know? interesting, because, uh, uh, you know, Rick brings up, you know, when, he, when they're having the big fight with him and Jerry, uh, how how Jerry ruined this da- his daughter, you know? Like, this is yeah. Rick Sanchez's daughter. She could have done fucking anything, and instead, like, he knocked her up. This fucking piece-of-shit worm loser whose only yeah. skill in life is making people pity him, which I'm sure is just the worst thing Rick could, like, possibly have to deal with. Um, yeah. Oh God! The fact I'm I'm just thinking of like if my daughter married a guy like Jerry, like Jesus Christ, that would be the fucking where I would want to murder him. I would want to murder that man. It would be a nightmare. But it's also partly Rick's fault because he wasn't around. That's very true. That's a very good point. Like he's the one who created the emotional vulnerability that probably left her open to just like fucking around with this kid and she was a little baby. Yeah. So uh, that sucks. Though you know, I do wonder. Did she, re- you know, the, the fact that you brought up before, like the fact that Jerry disappears and it doesn't immediately solve all our problems. Did she, does she really have like that much going on for herself? Like I know she's Rick's daughter, but it's not like she's some right. kind of super genius in her own right. You know, right. maybe she that's Rick she just is, being a little, but... yeah, maybe that's him being a dad, you know, just being a straight up dad yeah. there. I don't know. Uh, something to think about. I'm, I'm going to be keeping that in mind and like see if she shows burgeoning potential of, I don't know, magic science powers or something, I guess. I don't know. Yeah, well, that's uh, mm-hmm. that's all I've got to say about this episode. Really strong. You know, not not as, like, it's not one of those, like, brick-shitting incredible episodes that, like, mm-hmm. is just so perfectly crafted, like episode one. Yeah. Or, or something, or, or one that's, like, super unique, like Pickle Rick. Like, this is very, this is, like, standard Rick and Morty in a good way. Yeah. The last episode was, like... If you took just like the like the bog standard of the show, but like mm-hmm. below, like without actually having anything that stands out, this is an episode that's like as good as what should be the average for this show. I completely agree. That's a good way of putting it. I, it I, should I, be like this should be the minimum, and above and beyond should be the maximum. <laughs> you know? I very much agree. I'd give it like a strong eight or something like that. Yeah, agreed. All right, well, that's it, everybody. Thanks for listening. Rick's Demits, uh, yeah. back next week. Hey. I don't give a fuck, hey. bitch. I don't care about anything. Bye-bye. <laughs>